there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with the conclusion of the Rogue Master Brewer for Core 19. And we have a back-to-back -back winner with Zheng Yu C with Thudding Yargles. This actually, this list inspired me to build my own Thud list. But for today, we are going to be playing the Thudding Yargles deck by Zheng, Zheng Yu C. Um, so first of all, this is a list that is trying to get the most out of Yargle, Glutton of Urborg. We have the Sarcones on Ceiling, which also has a lot of synergy with Yargle, as well as Heart Piercer Manticore, which can sacrifice a Yargle, a Fling, or four Flings, and three Thuds, as well as a Supernatural Stamina to have even more of a combo with the Yargle, as this allows Yargle to be flung and then come back. Uh, for a whopping 11 points of damage. So basically, Yargle gets Supernatural stamina, and then you Thud it, and that, that does plus 2 damage to the Yargle, 11 damage to the face, and you get the, the Yargle back. So it's lethal if Yargle can actually attack in. I think I'm going to be trying a Hazaret uh, enchantment, Hazaret's Fervor, uh, to, to be a, give this another little uh, haste type ability. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of a different spin to this Thudding Yargle. It's played as, as closely as possible. Uh, one thing I don't have is the Bonjus of the Glorified on Arena. I don't feel like uh, using Mythics on Arena. And I have pretty much given up on MTGO. I haven't even opened MTGO. The only time I open MTGO is either to play Popper or to sell off my remaining collection. So I, I've just seen the writing in the sands. I don't think that the platform is going to survive much longer. So I don't want to be throwing money uh, at empty joe therefore we're just going to be utilizing what we have on arena so speaking of arena uh we'll get to it to a second and th throw this deck list up i also don't need to worry about a sideboard because we are just going to be playing this in the quick queue so the runner up though was an awesome popper submission by banani and this is a take on a violent outburst a green red violent outburst deck utilizing the horn kavu uh which then turns back a green or red creature that you can rinse and repeat like the uh either the Keldon marauders or the vaishino pyromancer so i kind of like this little uh, take on the horned kavu one thing i do think that this entry burning tree emissary would go very well uh with this deck i think it's something like essence warden can probably be put to the sideboard and a card like burning tree emissary is absolutely something that wants to be in here uh if you want another green one drop uh, a more aggressive card, like, like even like a young wolf or, um, I'm thinking, yeah, young wolf is probably the right, right call to put in this, this sort of slot. Uh, however, essence warden's good against the, uh, if you're going up against like an aggro mirror, other, I do still think this would be better for the sideboard slot. So pretty cool little deck idea by Banani G for the runner up popper submission so speaking of popper the next rogue master brewer is going to be a popper rogue master brewer so keep that in mind we'll give a, a full video announcement for when that is entries will be allowed for the uh rogue master brewer popper until then though let's get to arena so we have good old arena here up with the Thudding Yargles for exactly what I have going for us. Let me close some windows here. So this is, there are a few things that I'm going to do different. First of all, we're going to, we're going to go a full four supernatural staminas, four fatal pushes, uh, four thuds, four things. So I'm going, I don't want to, to carry Ziv's expertise was kind of a cool idea. I think it's dead in a lot of matchups though. Uh, it's relegated. I think this is more of a cyborg card. It's nice to be able to grab something and then fling it at your opponent or even taking a uh, blocker for Yargle to get in is smart with Carrie Zev's expertise. However, I, I don't know if this is, if a full, if running a full uh, list of, of Carrie Zev's expertise is, is, I think there's three in the deck, is the right go. So I'm going to cut it. We're going to still keep the bone pickers. Like I said, I'm not going to use some wild cards for, I only have eight mythic rares. I'm trying to hold them for a while for the Bantus. I actually don't even like Bantu in the list. I guess we'd have to talk to the author of the list to see how well it worked for him. Other than that, I, I, to me, I just don't like it. Another one too, Banefire is kind of awkward in the main. I get it. It's another direct damage uh, spell to face, but I'm going to cut a Banefire here and we're going to try this Hazaret. Uh, Hazard's Fervor. I think Hazard's Fervor works pretty well with the Yargle. It's something you can give haste to on an open board to Yargle. 
Um, it works okay with this Inferno Hellion as well, uh, getting in for nine points of damage. And if you have it with this Archon's Unseen, I think that's like uh, just the, the cherry on top. So this gives us some more aggressiveness. It also has the Bone Picker kind of synergy. If we need to get back with the Supernatural Stamina and a turn um, with the Hazards Fervor, this also works. So uh, Mana Base, I don't have all the Canyon Slows with the rotation coming up, not going to redeem the last two so we're just going to go four field of ruin that's a little bit of a change so eight mountains six swamps two canyon slows four dragon school summits and four field of ruins and pretty much everything else is is similar only two heart piercer manticore is not going to redeem for these cards either i did have two in my collection as i have done some omniket drafts in the past so that's the the gist of the deck list we'll go go ahead and queue this up and see how well we do so let's go ahead and we're going to do a a quick constructed we're going to put our money where our mouth is here and we'll actually queue it up untested deck in a quick constructed so i think this is going to be a little bit difficult to beat the red decks and the control decks however we should have game versus the mono green or anything in between like if we go for what a reason i keep going against cats on arena cats 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 uh so if we do go up against cats I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Let's bring on some game music here for everyone. Alrighty. So we have a Fling Fling Fatal Push Dragon Skull Summit. This is a mulligan. I don't think we can keep it. Uh, this is a little bit better. We at least have action. We'll keep a one thud. And we'll keep the canyon slow just in case we need to cycle it away. Okay, so let's go ahead and just lead off with a mountain here. And we are going up against a green deck. However, we do have kind of a weird draw. I think that the problem with like a lot of fling decks, the fling thud combo is is if you end up with a lot of hands where you get multiples of, of thuds and flings. Uh, so in my decks that I've ran thuds and flings, I started with a, f a full 4-4. Four, four. I've since cut them uh, to a more more of like i think my thud deck right now i have like a three one split or even a two one split so i want more draw and then i just need to find the one thud or fling to finish off the game uh i think with having i think we're gonna go slow into play tapped here because we do want our fourth and fifth land or slew i guess i should say it correctly before i get yelled at i believe that's how you say it Going to be taking the four damage here, uh, which means my opponent probably doesn't have a land drop or anything to cast it for. That's why they're attacking with the land or elf. Uh, yep, so we're in pretty good shape. The second one we won't do anything with, though. Uh, just going to pass the turn. And Hellion's kind of cool. We can attack with it and then Heart Piercer Mana Core it. I'm going to cycle this, this land. So still no, nothing from my opponent. They would have cast a 3-drop last turn. I wonder if there's just a bunch of removal in hand. So getting a Sarkons here would be pretty good too. But I think we're a little bit slow. Uh, for an aggressive deck. And I think that's going to be the problem with this deck. It doesn't really have any sort of early game. So cycle this one away. My opponent might also be worried that going up against a black red deck that I have some sort of control. This, do I just want to wipe my opponent's board here? Is that the better play? Keep my opponent off mana. The problem is, like, gain control of a creature, untap it, then you may cast... Okay, so I think we do this correctly. We can still cast the Bone Picker. 
So we're gonna gain control of the carry Zav. And I think this resolves before I get to do this portion of it. Yes. So we're gonna thud. Kind of a waste of a thud, but we have the Heart Piercer Manticore. And now, I think this is the best line. And we get a Bone Picker, which most likely is going to get Shocked or Lightning Striked, I would assume, uh, without my opponent having played anything else. But we're, we're in pretty good shape. My opponent has missed land drops, plus not had like a 3 or 4 drop to even play. So yeah, I'm assuming that exactly what I was assuming. There was a lot of uh, removal in my opponent's hand. But getting rid of that elf was pretty good. We have an Inferno Hellion. We are land galoring here. Inferno Hellion comes out, most likely going to die by another Spit Flame or something. So the carries have coming through on this game. Surprise, there was another Spit Flame or another removal spell. Looks like my opponent is shot on lands. It's going to be a Draconic Disciple. Uh, so we can go in with the Inferno Hellion. And get our opponent down to a 6. We're not going to go for the Draconic. That's, that's fine. I think I'll throw out just one more Swamp. Yeah, another thing that this deck could have is like, you could put like Tormenting Voices or Cathartic Reunion to get rid of excess Thuds. Usually want some uh, graveyard value though when you run cards like that, but uh, I've played a lot of Fling Thud decks and when you get too many multiples of cards, it's bad. Yeah, Hazardous Fervor actually does look really pretty good in this deck. Fun deck nonetheless. I like I like the way this is built. Wonder if, if cards like Traxos might be okay. Like Traxos would be uh, be able to be untapped with something like Yargle. All right, a Lightning Strike happens. Opponent's most likely going to attack in with the Draconic Disciple. We have an Adorned Pouncer. This deck is random. Uh, so I think we will go the Hellion. And then my opponent has to answer the Hellion this turn, or otherwise it's it's GG. Because we have the Heart Piercer Manticore from the Graveyard. Uh, to re-kill the Inferno Hellion. Still think that's the better play rather than Bone Picker. Bone Picker doesn't do anything for us. All right, the cage actually does take care of the Inferno Hellion. So we're going to go down to a nine. So I guess taking care of the Disciple would have been good. Oh, we got a Yargle now. We'll force another answer by my opponent. Must be queuing us up against it with deck strength is how it works. And my opponent does find another answer. Ugh. This Draconic Disciple just finding the the mana each turn. We're taking another two. Fortunately, Chandra's going to be able to ramp up to possibly a five drop that we haven't been able to deal with probably should have actually embalmed back yeah this one out of my graveyard rather than one in my hand because we are getting controlled out a johnny can also get rid of a creature right is that the johnny i'm thinking of Honor and courage. Now ay 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 this draconic disciple just fixing 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 there's the plains. We have a field of ruin, which actually does very little. Uh, <laughs> Bone picker is actually quite bad here, but it's 
Better than nothing. I don't know, maybe I should just hold back and wait for a fling type card. This is bad with Heart Piercer Manticore. I might just need to take care of both Planeswalkers next turn. I have a feeling there's another removal spell coming out. This a Johnny can actually kill itself to kill the Bone Picker. I mean, that's the strength of missing land drops for so many turns, too, is just the, the hands full of gas. We are very, very close to finishing off this game. Required a removal, 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 removal. Yep. And there goes another removal. And now this one can... A murderous cure. <laughs> this deck is so random. Is that lethal? That's lethal. Yep. All four on the Adorned Pouncer. <laughs> I lose. So I guess just kill this Draconic Disciple and not allow my opponent to fix with the Garbo three colors. All right. We'll go on to the next one. All righty. So <laughs> kind of awkward there with the lands we drew into at the end and opponent finding the removal <laughs> uh, triple or double red double white double blue or double green cards my opponent was able to cast greedy 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 all, all basic lands too Alrighty, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So, Fling Fling Thud, this is a mulligan. Uh, this is a little bit better with only with with the lands. Uh, I'm going to throw the Inferno Hellion on the bottom. I don't think it's where we want to be. We have the Yargle and the Fling. Now we need to find something like a Supernatural Stamina. And might be facing off against one of those opponents that just makes us... Okay, puts an Infernal Hellion anyway. Is our first draw. And Bone Picker is actually quite awkward in this deck. I don't I don't like it. I don't, I don't see... I, I, I get it. You get a 3-2 Death Toucher out for one mana. But it's coming out like a lot slower than you, you want it to come out. Uh, so we'll go Dragon Skull Summit here and then pass it. The problem with this deck is it's just putting out, without removing things, it does have the four fatal pushes. And when, I guess that is somewhat removal, but I'd like to see some more removal, maybe Magma Sprays. Yeah, we're just going to get out tempoed here. Before, I mean, we do have big creatures though that can. But if my opponent just goes and grabs, uh, Ranging Raptor is kind of meh. And I think, at this point, I think we just have to cycle. I'm going to cycle it right now. Just so I can hopefully fit a, hit a fatal push. Okay, and let's we'll slow him down a little bit. Would have been nice last turn to have that fatal push. But I think that's where we want to be. And unfortunately, it's just arranging raptors, which is going to ramp up our opponent like crazy. And our field of ruin is not doing anything again in this particular match. Decides not to attack. Don't know what's up with that. Um, Bone Picker seems quite weak if my opponent has anything off the top, but it seems a little bit better than Inferno Hellion. Now yeah, we'll put the, the Inferno Hellion. So far, no Sarkons on ceilings. We haven't seen any. I think that I think running a full package is where this deck wants to be too, to get the most value off Yargle and Inferno Hellion. So it gets to target its own ranging Raptor and ramp up even more. Oh no, when it attacks. Okay. okay. 
and a Savage Stomp. Uh, card for a Cardish, except once again the Ranging Raptors gets to ramp it. And now if we don't hit a land here, I think we're we're pretty much dead. Unfortunately, it's a thud. We'll get a Bone Picker out here, but we're dead to any any. Yeah, Bone Picker is actually a terrible to play there. That was that was that was not a good play on my part because it's just gonna die to any creature. So unless my opponent doesn't have a creature, it's a it's a Burning Sun's Avatar kind of a waste though. And even a Yargle Fling, what we need off the top, well, we need a land, and then we need... No, nah, I, I think we've lost this. Absolutely we've lost this, because we're going to die from damage by the time Yargles can do anything. All my opponent just has to do is keep attacking in. And the, even the Raging Registrar can do damage to me if my opponent figures out how to resolve the trigger. There you go. Now it's an 11. This has to be a land, or it's Bust, another Field of Ruin. It does get a Yargle. Yargle can play defense, but a double creature here kills Yargle. I think I have to play defensive with Yargle, too. And a Tally. Okay. Some big targets. So what's the only thing I can... Nope, have to block the Burning Sun's avatar here. And the Sarkons on the ceiling just comes way too late. And I'm dead if my opponent even attacks correctly. So not this deck is not looking too hot. Lost to two, in my opinion, pretty bad decks uh, right in a row. They did have some pretty good draws. The, the Dinosaur deck is 100% so reliant on this 4 under the Umpire. It's a pretty bad deck if it doesn't get it out on time. As it sets so many things up. But the problem with this deck, um, how it's built, it just doesn't have an early game. I think it has to cut down on the Thuds and Flings. I mean, I, I actually even added the Thud just to get extra effect. Uh, but you need ways to control the board early to get that Sarkons um, unsealing out. I think this needs to be more of a Sarkons unsealing deck than a, a Thud deck. And just have like a couple Thuds, a couple Flings. Uh, this one might be a little bit better for us. As we have Bone Pickers and we have the Fatal Pushes that can interact with the... Uh, our opponent's board stay early. We have Mulligan twice in a row, too. Beaumont Curse. now we have to go against a legit deck, and I don't think we're going to be able to beat a legit deck. This is going to be too quick for us. Unfortunately, too, this is the problem. Now we don't have the other fixing, so it can't even get a Bone Picker out. Got a Fatal Push a, Bo a Beaumont Courier, otherwise it will kill us. I have a feeling we're not going to hit lands this time, and it's going to be a three and out with this deck. <laughs> we'll play a little more on the... Okay, so it's a blue-red deck. It's a little bit different. All right, we're going to Fatal Push it. <laughs> Field of Ruin is nice, but we're going up against another deck that is not using non-basic, so our Field of Ruin ends up being just a kind of a dud card. And we have the trips on the bone picker. This, in my opinion, bone picker has to be cut. It does not do what this deck wants it to do. I, I just have the, maybe the three two death touch, the death touch fling, the death touch thud, but it's still a two for one at that point. All right. Well, we're just gonna wreck that inventor's fair right now. So we do have a target now with the inventor's fair. Good on lands, we can start casting Bone Pickers. We have a Fatal Push that can kill something else that comes out. Some sort of artifact-based deck.
Another Dragon Soul Summit. It's it's fine. I guess we just start firing off Bone Pickers. Feels bad. Casting a 4-drop for... Um, I mean, 3-2 for 4 mana. Still not a terrible card, I guess. Pretty sure it's going to die to removal, though. Smartly waits till the end phase. Yep. Not going to supernatural strength it. I'm going to I'm going to leave it for uh, later on. It's not where we want to be. I, I think using a supernatural strength for a bone picker. So basically, the consistency of this deck is the biggest issue. It's going to have a lot of these runs of of cards. Can't target a uh, chief of foundry with a fatal push. Let's do another one. And pass the turn. Opponent seems a bit flooded unless they have high ends to ramp into. Lightning Strike allows us to kill the Chief of the Foundry, though. Pretty even, three and three, but now we got a fling, and I put out another bone picker. At this point, I think we do use supernatural st uh, st uh, stamina to keep it alive. The carries that fling is nice, too. Nice little combo. Maybe that was what my opponent was, was relying on the removal, carries that flings. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, maybe this will be enough tempo to, unfortunately I have to use it right now. Rather than get the damage through with it. No, I, sh I should have just not cast it. Whoops, that was my bad. I get it on an extra five damage. I didn't have to cast the fling right away with the carry zev. Enigma Drake, not really anything in the... Unfortunately, we are definitely on the end of the Flood. So is our opponent, though. Mimic is quite weak against a 3-2 Flyer. It's got naming Construct. Yeah, so it's a Construct-based deck-ish. We're getting paired up against some very weak decks and not doing very well against them. My opponent does play that last card play out a inferno hellion and this one actually might go our way i don't know if our opponent can can actually deal yeah it gives us information never play that last land and we actually we skim off a win against a very very weak deck all right it just seems to be like maybe a new player playing with what cards like uh, a lot of callish cards to give you one ofs uh did have a misplay there on my part with the fling with the carries f So it seems like Quick Construct is back to matching versus deck strength rather than... They got rid of the rating completely. This is the only thing where the rating is gone. And I thought that was just like a shadow. Like, not a shadow. That's not the word. Like a hidden rating so that you couldn't manipulate it. You couldn't figure out where you're at. Because pe pe what people are starting to do is they're tanking their own rating to go against weaker decks. All right, let's just start off here with a Dragon Skull Summit. Double Infernal Hellion is kind of weird. These don't die at the end of turn either. They get they get shuffled back in. And ugh, this is going to be way too quick for us. Looks like we are going to die at the hands of these zombies. We're going to need to draw some fatal pushes ASAP. Oh, maybe it's not zombies, but that's still another really good... Sarkons and Ceiling is going to be great here, though. If we can survive the Sarkons and Ceiling... Let's, let's hope there's not a blue that's coming out here. We have to survive for two more turns, too. So, hopefully my opponent doesn't put out something huge this turn. Like a... Okay, just another Siphoner. That's fine. 
Gonna be able to draw a card. Carry Zev. Doesn't allow us to do anything here. Okay, so this will actually... This will be really good for us. There's no blue. And this is on cast, right? Not even on... Punnett should use one of them. I hope they overextend. They shouldn't cast anything here. Just get in for six. Get me down to an eight. Because this Inferno Heli is just going to wipe the board. All right. So my opponent does not respect the Sarkon's Unsealing. Just wants that additional one damage, which seems really bad. Now, maybe you play around it. Dragon's Will Come is the best card possible because it allows us to get the Bone Picker. So we'd rather have 10 damage out or 9 I think 10 damage is perfect lethal. Four and then four again, rather than just the nine. It's actually not. But then we have a carry Zev that we could, because what, what I'm saying here is we cast the seven. That does uh, four damage to each creature and opponent. Takes down to 15. Now we're going to be one short no matter what. But my opponent was very silly to overextend there. But the Sarkons on the ceiling came through. And see, this is why I like the this aspect better. Alright, it's going to kill the, the Inferno Hellion. That's fine. So now I'm definitely liking the play better. Okay, so I can go... Yargle here. Yeah, Yargo's fine. Put us down to an 8, and now it has to take care of a Yargo and a Bone Picker. So yeah, I think Tormenting Voice... Cards like Tormenting Voice or Cathartic Reunion to try to find, like, dig, dig, dig for the Sarkons on Ceiling is the way to go. Uh, Put it just gave us the game with the... Do we have enough? Let's see. So carries us expertise. No, we don't have enough. So this is actually a legit deck that, that we beat here. It might not be tuned the greatest. Looks like it's a zombie's splashing glint sleeve siphoner. Because a lot of zombies do run the, the Scrap Heat Scrounger. And Walk the Plank is a an option. Like some, some players prefer it over Cast Out or Cast Down. All right, so we're 2-2 two and two actually. Maybe I shouldn't knock this deck. I will make some changes after this league though. I think that, that going down, probably a 3-2 three, split, three, fl three flings, two thuds. Uh, going up in Cathartic Green is just to get rid of stuff. Maybe adding some earlier control is the right route to go, like Magma Sprays or Shocks or uh, even at that at this point, Cast uh, cast Downs. Uh, of course, Vraska's Contempt might be a necessary evil in this deck. Maybe we could run the whole... <laughs> Gotta win five in a row. Can we do it? Fun deck though. Fun deck. Good. Was getting frustrated there with a few, the first couple games, but it's it's panning out pretty good now. This is a decent little hand. See, Bone Picker just needs to have more things to synergize with. And at the moment, it's just just not there. Some games it's gonna be awesome, where. Of course, the, the the Fatal Push Bone Picker is really uh, a clutch play. And now we actually do have it uh, for next turn, a Fatal Push Bone Picker. But that just ramps it out one extra turn. And then we can actually protect it with a Supernatural Stamina. I'm just going to go ahead and field a Ruin.
So I wonder if my opponent was was actually holding up a disallow. Black is still probably the right. Cause we I think we only need two red. So it does get another island. Still doesn't play anything on turn three, so we will just run out of Bone Picker. If my opponent wants to counter a Bone Picker, that's fine. We need to get this Sarkons on ceiling out. So I'm assuming like a Lightning Strike is going to come down on the Bone Picker. Oh, a Glimmer. So it's going to be some sort of Torrential Gear Hulk strategy. So we can start protecting the bone picker. I don't know if it's much of a tempo. Remember when this card was spoiled, it just had the hype was real for this card. People thought it was gonna be modern playable um, and it fell even short in standard. All right, so my opponent's playing kind of a... Still can't go Torrential Gear Hulk. I've seen zero cards. Usually when you see Glimmers, you just automatically assume Torrential Gear Hulk. Disperse. Leaving up a Counterspell. And why is it saying I can't? Okay, now it's saying I can recast it. So we'll recast it. So if this does get countered, it's a two for one for a bone picker, which I'm absolutely okay with. See, what, well, putting like Tormenting Voice and Cathartic Reunion does in this de in this uh, deck as well as allows you to get rid of Fatal Pushes against matchups where they might be dead. So unfortunately, we're up to Torrential Gear Hulk. Ooh, Chandra. That is a risky Chandra, unless my opponent's got just a, a plain negate. Especially if it goes plus two mana and casts something, like an Enigma Drake. Nope. All right, so we're going to go for the Sarkons Unsealing. All right, Sarkons Unsealing is out. This is going to be tough for my opponent to beat because we have, we have Yargle that's coming out, which is going to do the damage. Trial of Knowledge. Draw three, discard one. My opponent decides to cast it. Nope, decides not to. Going to leave up counter magic, I would assume. My opponent taps out there in very bad shape. because We have nine. Plus four. Yeah, it's actually not in horrible shape. We definitely will go for Yargle. And I don't even need a target, does 4-4. Four, four. So Chandra gets dumbed down. Can disallow the trigger, though. No, it's fine. Still does the 4 damage. Now you're asking for it. So the bone speaker, the bone... Picker slot too. If there's something at four, You're going down. disperse. Disperse is actually very annoying. You can disperse disperse the Sarkons on ceiling. Decides to cast it, so we got to think my opponent has more counter magic. Chandra is going to be a, an issue. Field of ruin.
can't cast multiple targets. I think I'm just going to go for a bone picker. And I do have the fling supernatural stamina. Hmm. I'm going to try to bait off like, oh, okay. So I was going to go at end step, but I guess it didn't give me a option to see if there was going to be a glimmer. No, I'd have to response first. So see where Chandra is going to go. Five cards in hand. Can it go for adding mana? Sure, that can resolve. Now I can kill Chandra in a turn here by going a fling supernatural stamina. And then hold back a bone picker. It's a lot of ifs though with, with how my opponent's tapping out. Torrential Gear Hulk. Going to cast it right now. Don't know if that is the right play. Obviously, my opponent wants to hold up some sort of... Um... So this is going to give my opponent some options. We're definitely flinging. And it's it's part of a, a sacrifice, so we'll get the bone picker back no matter what. So it can resolve. And we'll see what my opponent casts. A glimmer. Okay. Probably should fling in response to that. Yeah. I'm assuming there's a counter spell in hand. That will put my opponent tapped out, which will allow me to, to resolve a Sarkon's Unsealing. However, for we'd need to draw another land to get a Heart Piercer Manticore. And then we're still not in the greatest shape. So negate on the fling. We get the Bone Picker back. When it does get a Scry 2 and draw 2. Unfortunately, we did not hit that land. So it's still the best case scenario is to get that Sarkons and Zealing out. And we're gonna go for Chandra. Now you've done it. We just don't want Chandra. Well, no, I don't know if Chandra is actually the right play there. Probably should have just gone to the face, go to 13. Opponent's got just a, a slew of cards in hand. Used a bunch of disperses already. Decides not to cast... Oh, it's just an island. It looked like a glimmer there, but... Need a land off the top. Really need a land off the top. Haven't seen any disallows yet. Gotta think they're in the, the deck. My opponent was keeping out specifically three mana one of the turns, so not sure what that's about. Hate to see like another torrential gear hulk. You gotta think they're my opponent's only gone through one though. Not a bone picker, one to land.
A disallow would actually be lethal with a turn till Gearhulk disallow. Four, five, six, seven. Nope, doesn't have the mana for it. But disallow would also still be bad. I can kill Chandra at that point. I think I'm keeping back our good old Bone Picker. Yeah, I'm going to keep back Bone Picker. It's a good play. Takes care of the Planeswalker. It's going to Lightning Strike to my face. So, obviously, my opponent has enough damage uh, just to finish off the game, I'd assume. With Lightning Strike, Lightning Strike, Lightning Strike. Haven't seen any Lightning Strikes till then. So that's my assumption. Really? Okay. Okay, so we'll make the trade with the Bone Picker. gonna go ahead and feel to ruin the highland lake might as well grabs an island we do get a land which allows for double cast so we'll attack with the inferno hellion Torrential Gear Hulk is just going to come down and strike it, I'd assume. Allows us to cast a Bone Picker for 4-1. For Don't know if that does much. I think we still want to kill the Torrential Gear Hulk, though. We could have done, you know... Damage the face there, but I think that's I think that's the right play. And look at the amount of cards my opponent has still in hand. We've killed two torrential gear hulks and a Chandra, though. I don't know how many more win cons my opponent has in. You know, he used lightning strikes, used only seven lands. I guess oh, there's t there's eleven lands. That's a rough card. Should have to go for the Heart Piercer Manticore though. And unfortunately, the Heart Piercer Manticore does not get a Sarkon's Unsealing trigger. Yeah, that's that's rough. So need I need a, a creature off the top. And these lousy fatal pushes. Just gonna cast back the Heart Pressure Manticore. Unfortunately, again, does not trigger off the Sarkon's Unsealing. Let's 
See if it gets dispersed. I think disperse would have gone after the Sarkons on ceiling, though. But I, I do want this out as it pressures the Chandra. We have so much garbage we can draw it draw into like thuds. This has to have some sort of card uh, draw in it, in my opinion. Disperse on the Sarkons on ceiling. That's I don't know why my opponent didn't use that earlier. Just in case I would have drawn into a creature, then it would have re removed Chandra. And then after the fact, though, now I think it should have been on the Heart Piercer Manticore. So obviously my opponent doesn't. This will be easy. It's a glimmer. Ugh. Of course my opponent's going to cast the glimmer. Does not cast the glimmer. That is interesting. So what does my opponent have? Wants to keep up counter magic. I'm gonna go for Chandra. Gonna just cast another Chandra my hair is on fire? <laughs> I know. to kill the Heart Piercer Manticore. Unfortunately, it's double Sarkon on ceiling, which is just bad here, uh, and double Fatal Push stuck in hand. So, unfortunately, I think what we're going to draw next turn is a thud. We don't have very many creatures at all left in the deck. Uh, we have like a, and Bone Picker doesn't work with it. So we have two dead bone pickers. We have a Yargle and a couple Inferno Hellions. This feels to me there needs to be more targets. Eight, it just doesn't. Uh, Traxos is a good pick here. Uh, even something like a Demanding Dragon. Yep. You're going down. Disallow just does two damage to my face. Well, they got through nine lands, though, my opponent has. I wonder how many of these are, are lands. And there's the Chandra's Pyrohelix for the, the, the victory. So that's my overall criticism of the deck. A lot of redundancies. Of course, when it works, it's going to work. It's going to work very well. However, the deck is just too riddled with uh, scenarios where unless you get what you want to be, uh, you, you know, the perfect draws. Let's go back back over to the deck. You're going to have a tough time. So I'd like to see like more removal in the main. Again, yeah, going down in the thuds, fling supernatural stamina is probably the right call. Going up in another card. So what we need is we need power seven. And that doesn't do it that way. So just creature wise in black or red something possibly even like a gear hulk a burgers gear hulk or even the other gear hulks fine the six six uh four six obviously you'd want a seven a four two like an early four would be okay too so like even like a soul stinger wouldn't be terrible because it would trigger off Let's some other earlier. 4 2 Oval Chase Daredevil? No, we'd want something like a, a Josu would be horrid either. Because I'm not, I'm not a fan of the Bone Pickers after playing it. And. Doesn't seem like Black has anything that really cheats out. Plague Belcher wouldn't be bad as a 5 4. But it only triggers the first part of it. It doesn't trigger the... Sarkons. 
If we go higher, the first seven, Demon Lord Belzenok would be pretty sweet uh, for the six drop, but I'm thinking there's probably better stuff at six drops. So Yargle is the first one that triggers it off. And then we have, then it's something like Tor Torgar's not terrible uh, with smaller creatures to get it out quick, but that'd be another, you definitely have to play a lot of creatures that want to die to get the value off of Torgar. Like Doom Dissenters type stuff, and that wouldn't be terrible. There might be some other, uh, like Treasure Keeper would be another card I could think of that would be horrid uh, to put out to early, or any any of the, the artifacts, any of the uh, traditional ones I use in like God Throws Gift wouldn't be terrible with Torgar. Because Torgar could just be a win con too. With a, so Torgar, Fling, and Sarkons on Ceiling. That, that, that would be a di totally different deck though. I think we'd have to to run. And as far as red is concerned, I thought there was another good one. Like Blood Bloodish Baller is not terrible. Uh, it triggers off the Sarkons on Ceiling for just two mana. That would be a good option. I think that'd be the first really good option. A Hazaret wouldn't be awful either because it could get, get rid of the redundancies of the the fatal pushes, the thuds and flings. It doesn't look like there's a lot of aggressive cards you can cheat out. Combat Celebrant, not terrible. Combat Celebrant would be okay with like the Hazard's uh, favor. Didn't get to see Hazard's favor in any of those matchups. I think those are, are really good with the Inferno Hellion. The, the Lap New Hellion wouldn't be bad either. It's a nice aggressive just for three mana. Yeah, that wouldn't, 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 be, wouldn't be horrible. Decent little thud fling target as well. Going into dragons and something like the Sarkon, Fireblood, also wouldn't be bad. As it would allow you to get rid of uh, redundant cards. That might just be a better option than the Fatal Push or the, the Tormenting Voices. A lot of this deck does stick around too, post-rotation. We lose fling, but thud... Fud is enough, in my opinion. I think running too many of these is actually the problem. L lose, like, Supernatural Stamina, but it's not a must. Lose Fatal Push, that's also not a must. Um, lose Heart Piercer Mandicore, that is a, a fun card in this. But, yeah, the, the the bones of this deck is still here. With the Sarkon Unsealing, Argo, and Infertile Hellion, uh, plus with the Thud. So maybe we'll have to, we'll just try a, a, a no-rotation deck with this. I thought there was like a good desert card for four mana that you had to put a counter on something. Kelden Raider, not horrible. Something like Skizix. You're ideally looking for something with seven power when you cast it. Demanding Dragon, of course, would be good. Charging Monster Store. Uh, the Glory Bringer would be fine. Yeah, the Mantor, Man Mantor with a Gauntlet. Three damage when it comes into play, plus it triggers off the other but you you probably want something better than than that. You know, seven is the the tough part in red and black. Usually that's what's paired with green. Traxos though also would be uh, pretty good. Like when you go over to artifacts, you have Traxos that can be ramped out for four mana. It's a seven seven. It doesn't untap it. Enters battlefield tap and doesn't untap unless you cast a historic spell, which is kind of tough with this deck. It does trigger off Yargle though, and does trigger off trigger off multiple Traxoses, and actually gives you a better see. That's that's where I would like to go with this deck. Is it, for right now that would be the main addition. Is something like four Traxos. You're rarely ever going to be able to to attack with it, but it is a good fling and Sarkons and Ceiling target. Uh, like Bone Picker would be a, a card I would. I, there was times it was okay, but for the vast majority of the times, I don't like Bone Picker. Uh, same thing. I still think Carries of the Acrodis, even without even redeeming the rest of it, is not where I want to be. Like this is where Bontu or Hazaret you could throw in uh, with Traxos. That's a way to untap it. But I don't think that Traxos needs to be untapped. You go a few of the other. Uh, littler artifact cards, like I said, and, and then run the 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 one that allows you to sacrifice to do damage right to the face. There's a lot of options with this, so it's got the 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 the, the gears going. I'm gonna mess around with this deck and see what I can come up with. 
see if I can get a, a better showing uh, with this this deck. Uh, but yeah, fun little idea. Congratulations to the, the Rogue Master Brewer. And again, we'll be having Popper coming up shortly. So get those Popper brews going. Uh, this has been Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder. Thanks for watching.